This week on Life on Jupiter. We're in America. <laughs> We're in America. We are no longer illegal aliens. We check in to the United States. We inadvertently test our kick-up rattles. So the beauty of this kick-up system. And we have front row seats to the greatest show on Earth. Look at that guy! After reporting our arrival on the online app, we were instructed to proceed to the nearest customs office. That meant a long dinghy ride through the Port of Canaveral. Morning, sir. We're in a dinghy uh, just waiting uh, on the uh, westbound side, waiting for. Uh, We are on the west side, eastbound. So we're waiting for the lock gates to open. <laughs> Try to stay off this concrete wall here. The bottom bit's concrete anyway, covered in barnacles. Just so we can go to customs to clear in. And this bloody northerly wind at 20 knots is making it really hard, like we're just getting soaked in the dinghy. Nothing we can do except put up with it. It's the lifestyle of the rich and cruiser. No, it doesn't work. The lifestyle of the poor cruiser. That's it. Poor. Gates are almost closed. Water will come in. I don't know if there's any dolphins with us on this one. They were going that way anyway. We are no longer illegal aliens. <laughs> they let us in. Yay. Gave a six month visit. Sweet. <laughs> so now we're just walking back to the dinghy and we're gonna have a wet ride again back to okay. Jupiter. And we've worked out, we're going to move the boat about 15 miles away to better view of the launches. One tomorrow, one on Monday. So hanging for that. Now that we were legal, I just had to go and get a closer look at that Falcon 9 booster.
This wetland was a complete change of scenery for us on Jupiter. We had the usual dolphins, but we also had manatees, alligators, and a heap of different birds. The princess was trying to convince me she saw a pink bird. She was so excited that we just had to check it out. Now all good captains will blame their crew, so I blame Princess for making me chase pink birds. Yeah, but it's broken. Well, that wasn't much fun. <laughs> Pushing it onto the mud banks here. So now I've uh, broken the shear pins, but that's okay, we got spares. And now I just locked the steering straight, and now I'm using power to uh, steer. Because we're anchoring just here somewhere. That's the first time I saw it. That's the first time we've broken the shear pins. Yeah. Yep. And it works. Yeah, I mean, I thought being mud that the rudders would just drive through it, but apparently it was harder mud than I thought. No problem with the rudder post, which is nice. May get splashed. <laughs> oh, good. So these are my shear pins or pieces of wood uh, ready to go. Uh, two holes for the cable ties and I fitted these before so um, I needed to grind out this centre bit just so it fits snugly. Yeah? So the beauty of this kick-up system, as proved today, was um, yeah, we got stuck in the mud and instead of doing any damage to the rudders, they kicked up and that's great. But that also reduced our draft so that we were able to float free. But you've got to be careful of the propeller. The propeller's turning will be, you know, just possibly close to the mud, no longer protected by the rudder. So you're just going to be very gentle with your propellers and any sign of vibration back to neutral very quickly yeah. let's do the last one So this one's pretty loose, you can see it just barely sitting. So this one definitely needs the cable ties to hold it down. I'm going to have to make some more backup. Shipping. I think I've got some wood already. You still have more wood? Yeah, I think i got yeah. up in the bow. Did its job. <laughs> Falcon 9 launch. Just there. Well, I say just, it's about six miles away and it looks really small from here. But 
Ah, we got what do we got? 45 minutes left, uh, I think. But yeah, very excited, very excited. <laughs> 50 years waiting for this. Yeah. My God. No. <sighs> but we're gonna see it first. We're gonna see a real thing. And then when we can't see it anymore, we'll come and watch it. <laughs> So it's blowing like 22 knots here, but we are as close as we can possibly get to the Falcon 9. It's about to take off in about 40 minutes. So you can probably see the vehicle assembly building there, the big white box, just to the left of that. And probably another four miles further is the, uh, the launch pad. And with the binoculars, we can see the Falcon 9 there. Operation support. Go. Calm. Go. Umbilical. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with account. ALC. Verified T0 is set. We're 1737 Zulu. Verified. The sound will come like probably 20 seconds later. Can you see it, B? Oh, shit. oh my god! This is the first time I saw a rocket! Oh! oh my god! Are they really gonna go to the space? No, it's a flat earth. <laughs> oh my god! See, see him rolling over? Get out of the way, cloud! Oh. Wow. It's not finished okay. yet, B. It's just a cloud in the way. Yeah. Whew. It's breathtaking. As it delivers our Starlink and rideshare payloads to orbit. On the left, it's now passing 11,000 kilometers an hour. In the Atlantic Ocean. 150 so kilometers high or low Earth orbit in five minutes. At around 550 okay, kilometers. How many minutes to go up to space? Two. Two, two minutes. And a half. Wow. Yeah, it's a stage and separation. I think it was two and a half. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to wait, make its way back to Earth. Uh. 